Hey guys, welcome back to another video. So this is part three of the chemistry syllabus and in today's video we're going to be having a look at atoms, elements and compounds. This is a topic that we've been doing since, you know, the start of secondary or the start of chemistry where we just have a look at simple uh, definitions of what atoms are, elements are and compounds. So this is no different. It is the same basic concept between the three. So we're going to have a look at atoms, elements and compounds. Before we begin with the video, let's have a look at the uh, topic outline or let's have a look at everything we are going to be covering in today's video. Now in today's video, I'm going to have a look at the core segment and the supplement segment. As I say in every video, core is for specific papers and supplement is a different type of paper. For example, if you're doing supplement, you're doing paper 2, paper 4 and paper 5. But when you're doing core, you're doing paper 1, paper 3 and paper 6. The difference between core and supplement is just the difficulty level and the maximum grade you can get in core is a C. But uh, again, that's, you know, just different topics. So if you're only doing core, you need to know just a few topics. But if you're doing supplement, you need to do you need to know all the topics covered in today's video. So basically, we're going to start by having a look at protons, neutrons and electrons. This shouldn't be something that you haven't heard of. We all know about protons, neutrons and electrons because it comes in various subjects other uh, than chemistry. We need to also define what a proton number is, what a nuclear number is, uh, you know, how we can form these. We have a look at the nucleus, we have a look at isotopes, and we have a look at the two types of isotopes. After that, we'll have a look at the uses of an isotope, and in specific, the use of a radioactive isotope. And then finally, end with looking at electrons in the shell, and how we can distinguish between each um, of the different electrons in the different elements uh, in looking at uh, it in terms of the shell. So further ado, let's begin with the first thing that you need to know is the table on relative charge. Now sometimes in examinations you're asked to fill this table so it's very important to understand this. Now as I told you previously, in the nucleus we or in an element or in an atom to be specific, uh, there is a proton, there is an electron, and there is a neutron, okay? And we need to know that a proton has a positive charge. Now, I'm sure you've already heard of this proton term, electron, neutron, so this shouldn't be that hard for you because you've already heard of such terms. So proton is positive, electron is negative, neutron has no charge. The approximate relative mass is 1 for proton, and for electron, you should write 1 over 1860. And the nutrient mass is 1. Okay, and then you can see right here, it's saying, note, for all practical calculations, the relative mass of an electron is assumed to be 0. So for, for electrons, if you want to calculate relative mass, you assume this is 0, okay? not 1 over 1860 but again when they tell you to fill the table it is fine to write 1 over 1860 as the relative mass now let's have a definition between what a proton number is and a nuclear number again you have already heard of these terms but again it's important to go through this again a proton number is simply these are the number of protons in the nucleus of an atom so we have the nucleus in the atom and we have the shells that surround it Inside the nucleus, we have the protons and we have the neutrons, okay? And in the shell, we have the electrons. So the proton number is simply the number of protons in the nucleus of the atom. And to a, a note that you need to know is that the electrons and the protons have the same number. That means if I have 10 protons, I have also 10 electrons, okay? But again, if it's an ion, there's a different case, and we'll have a look at that later on in different chapters. The next thing or the next term is the nuclear number. The nuclear number is the total number of the protons and the total number of the neutrons. Okay, so the protons plus the neutrons in the nucleus of an atom will give you the nuclear number. Okay, this is called the nuclear number or also called the mass number. Now, usually you are found you're, you usually find the atomic number and the mass number in the periodic table and in just a few moments I'll show you how a diagram of that is represented in the periodic table but before we go to that we need to know how to calculate the number of neutrons 
okay because something that you need to understand in this topic is how you can calculate you know for example if i have a proton how can i calculate my electrons we know that protons is equals to electrons so if i have 15 protons i have 15 electrons then how do i calculate my neutrons if i have my nuclear number and i have my atomic number i simply minus my nuclear minus my proton just as you can see this formula if i want to find the number of neutrons i just do nuclear number minus the proton number in an atom the number of protons equals to the number of electrons so just what i've told you right now and the number of positive charges equal to the number of negative charges that therefore it means that the atom has no charge or no net charge as we say that because it's neutral now a proton number or an atomic number is the basis of the modern periodic table and elements are arranged in order of their increasing atomic number so here is the example that i was showing previously this is the element beryllium okay and beryllium has the atomic number of four and the mass number of nine sometimes periodic tables will you know switch it up and to identify which one is the mass number and which one is the proton number you need to know that the proton number is always the smaller number between the two so that's how you identify it, okay so whichever is the smaller number that is the atomic number or the proton number okay atomic number and proton number mean the same thing if you're getting confused now here is just a symbol you have beryllium and then on top is the atomic number and the bottom is the mass number but sometimes it's different you can have a different format sometimes you can have the mass number and you can have the atomic number and you can see here in the note it is telling us that a different format can be used but in case the greater number is always the atomic mass number while the smaller number is always the atomic number so the mass number is the bigger one the smaller one is the atomic number now with hydrogen it only has uh, the, it has the same uh, proton and um, proton number and the mass number so therefore it means that the mass is one and the atomic number is one we move on to some questions that we have right here so here we are supposed to calculate the number of protons the number of neutrons and the number of electrons so let's start with ga this is a gallium atom so let's begin Remember, the smaller number is the proton, so the smaller number right here is 31. To find my neutrons, I simply have to do 69 minus 31, which should give me 38. And remember, my electrons are simply the number of protons. The next one is that we have an isotope and rem uh, here, and an isotope that we later got to know is an isotope is simply the same mass number but different atomic number. So you can see it has the same, uh, sorry, same atomic number but different mass number. Okay, so here we show we, we calculate the same. The number of protons is the smaller number, so 31, and um, the number of neutrons is 40, and remember the electrons are the same. So here's the table to confirm that. This is all correct. So quite easy and quite simple. Remember, neutrons is the mass number minus the atomic number. Now let's have a look at the atomic structure. I'm talking about the protons, electrons, and neutrons, but we also need to know where these are located in an atom. So we call this the atomic structure. But before having a look at that, we need to define what an atom is. And an atom is the smallest particle of an element that retains the chemical properties of that element. An atom is, sub com is composed of subatomic particles that we call the protons, electrons, and neutrons that we've just been talking about. Now, protons and neutrons are present in the nucleus, and the electrons are present in the shells, or we call this outside the nucleus. This we can call is orbits, or we say they're in a motion of orbiting. That means they go around the nucleus. Now, before we go to that, we need to know that nucleus has a positive charge because remember, neutrons have no charge and protons have a positive charge, but the shell has a negative charge. So here we have a diagram of an atomic structure of helium. Okay, and you can see we have two protons inside, two neutrons. Okay, and we have two electrons. Okay, so that's how you calculate it. Now, let's have a look at isotopes. Atoms of the same element 
which have the same proton number but a different nuclear number are called isotopes. Now isotopes are simply just the same element, okay? It's just the same element. For example, I have beryllium, I have beryllium. The only difference is that this time the nucleon number or the mass number is different and that's what classifies it to be an isotope. The chemical properties of an element largely depend on the number of electrons in the outer shell and that's why that's one of the reasons why we organize the elements in terms of you know the proton numbers or electron numbers. Now isotopes have the same number of electrons and because they have the same number of electrons they will have the same electronic configurations and because they have the same number of electrons they will have the same chemical properties. So let's have a look at the isotopes of hydrogen. So you can see right here, the number of protons and electrons are the same, but the mass number is different. You can see right here, we have one proton. Here, we have one proton. Here, we also have one proton. The only thing that's changing is the neutron number, which classifies the mass number, which is all different in each of the isotopes of hydrogen. Now let's have a look at the two types of isotopes because we have the radioactive and the non-radioactive. The radioactive are unstable isotopes but the non-radioactive is stable isotopes. Now what is this unstable and stable isotopes? The isotopes which are unstable have extra neutrons in their nuclei which is called nucleus and are radioactive and that, therefore they are called radioisotopes because they have extra neutrons. Radioisotopes emit radiations that are in much lower abundance than the non-radioactive ones. Now we use these radioisotopes in medical purposes. Now, for example, isotopes is actually a treatment of cancer. And sometimes you hear the term chemotherapy and that basically has a look at, you know, uh, having a look at radiation to treat cancer. So as you can see here, the medical use of an isotope is also used for tracers in medicine to detect blockage in the arteries or to study the psychology of certain organs. So basically, one of the uses for radioisotopes is medical use. The industrial use of isotopes is, for example, uranium. Uranium is a very famous uh, element that is used as a source of power and it's a very powerful element to create power. And we know this, that they make nuclear reactors. And we use these radioisotopes like uranium as, you know, an example. Now, radioisotopes are used as traces to detect gas leaks. And also, they are used to detect water level in overhead water tanks. Finally, let's move on to electronic configuration. Now, in electronic configuration is different for every element. Okay, except if they are isotopes. But again, remember, isotopes are the same element, so technically they have the same configuration. Now, electrons are present outside the nucleus in the electron shells, and these electrons will help us to form the electronic configuration. For now, as you can see right here, for the IGCAC exon purpose, it is safe to assume that the third electron shell is also accommodates eight electrons, but in real, it accommodates 18 but for IGCC we only need to say that it accommodates 8. So what do I mean by it accommodates 8? Now for example I have 10 electrons and I want to write an electronic configuration. To write an electronic configuration we simply have to have a look at the electrons and make the configuration. The first shell only holds two electrons, the second eight and the third Eight. So if I want to make 10, I will say 2.8 and 2.8 is, as you can see right here, Ne neon. Okay, so that's how you simply form this. And uh, later on, you know, you don't even need to remember this because we have the periodic table behind our paper. So we can just simply go to our periodic table, look at how many electrons are, and you can therefore get the electronic configuration, which is quite simple. So here it's a table of the 20 electrons and their configurations. Usually you are asked only for the 20 elements and this is a quite easy con a question. Now later on we'll have a look uh, at groups and um, we'll have a look at how we use these electronic configurations to you know classify the different elements or how we you know sort of um, 
use these electrons to say okay this should be here this should be there should be there so how we can organize it in a periodic table with the electron configuration but later on in the pre the future topics where we talk about the periodic table we'll have a look at how we you know basically show the properties of different electrons with the help of electronic configuration so here it says electron distribution diagrams you can see um in this this first shell has one electron here uh, the first shell has two, the last one has eight. Here you can see there are so many and so on. Here we have the octate rule. The octate rule basically says that a noble gas has eight electrons in their outer shell, which basically means they're in an octate state, okay, except helium, which has only two electrons. So basically, this is just a term that we say in chemistry to be stable, an octate. So when you have an octate state, you have eight electrons in the last shell, and these are basically usually the group zero elements or the group eight elements other elements try to attain the electronic configuration of the nearest noble gas by gain or loss or share of electrons let's have a look at valency what's a valency a valency is simply the number of electrons that an element needs to lose to gain or to share in order to attain the electronic configuration of the nearest noble gas Okay, so basically, the main purpose of a valency is to get to an octate state, and uh, that's where valencies come across. And later on, whenever we want to make a chemical equation, we need valencies. Note, a valence electrons are the number of electrons in the outer shell. Now, ions are electrically charged particles. When an atom gains electrons, it forms a negative ion. And when the atom loses an electron, it will gain a positive ion. In the later chapters, we will have a look at this in more in-depth. But we have the anion right here and the cation. So later on, we'll have a look at that later. But here we have a diagram showing the electronic configuration of fluorine, aluminium, sulfur, argon, neon, and neon. And we can see the valency it dip changes from time to time, and they're forming different ions. But for this chapter, you just need to have a look at that. There's something called valencies. But later on, we will study how to obtain these valencies in the when we're studying the chapter on periodic table. And we will also have a look at how we can construct, you know, ionic equations and so on and so forth. So there you go, guys. That was chapter three, a quite easy chapter where we only talk about the atoms, elements and compounds that we've been talking about since we started chemistry hopefully this video was uh, informative and i will be making the unit four in just a few weeks so stay tuned for that thank you for watching this video and i'll see you in the next one goodbye